New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, give it up for the beautiful Car- Carmen Perez. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. And public yeah, advocate, yeah, Jamani yeah. Williams. <laughs> Happy birthday, Happy Carmen. Birthday. Thank you. Wait, is it today? It is today. Oh, happy birthday. Damn. Thank you. Working on your birthday. Yeah, always. always Jumani, you're beautiful it. also, by the way. I appreciate that. I'm waiting. <laughs> it's 2020. It's 2020. It's 2020. So, <laughs> no, you're, you're very good looking. Guy. You're very good looking guy. Uh, you guys are both here today because uh, something brewing in the city. Uh, cash bail. There was a law passed. Uh, how recently was that law passed? Last year, 2019. Yeah. 2019. That's being now... Um, I guess, uh, marketed as a negative, let's put it that way, where crimes are happening in the city and people are saying that it's because of this cash bail law that there's been some incidents or crime in the city and they want to now reverse it. Am I saying it right or they want to amend the law? Yeah, I mean, that's that's correct. First of all, um, cash bail wasn't done away with. It was reduced. So we just, let's be clear there. There's still a lot of uh, crimes that are uh, bailable. And the most important thing to remember is that there have been crime in the city for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. It didn't uh, just start. No. Uh, uh, and the cash bail now has been, the reform has been in effect maybe for 20 days. So I don't understand the correlation between all of the crime that has happened last year and the reform that started on January 1st. Wow, this is just since January 1st. January and they've been making 1st. all this noise, marketing this. Yes. yes. And the thing we have to remember is they're actually making our point. The only purpose for bail is to make sure people return to court. That's it. What has happened, though, if you were poor, you couldn't afford cash bail. And so you were stuck in rights. You were stuck. And what we were saying, that's not right and that's not equitable. And so what people are confusing is bail and remand to jail. Those are two different conversations, and the people are trying to play chess on the Monopoly board. So this is 100%, I have to assume, and I'm jumping ahead here, this negative marketing against this new law is 100% being financed by people who will make money from the bail system. It's not just people who are making money from the bail system, right? Because what we don't realize is that there are five major insurance companies who own the bail industry. We think it's a mom and pop shop, but it's not. Um, It's also elected officials. It's also people who are afraid um, and don't really understand the purpose of bail. And so they're wobbling when it comes to bail reform. So it's not just people. And those who thrive off the system. So, you know, uh, police departments, DAs, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned, elected officials, a lot of Democrats, Mm -hmm. too. So now fear is a hell of a thing. And, you know, you have presidential candidates now who are apologizing for three strikes in the out, uh, apologizing for the crime bill. A decade later, another presidential candidate who was a mayor apologizing for stop, question, frisk, abuses. All those things happen. Talk about Bloomberg. Oh, yeah, and Biden. And Biden. And And Biden, yeah. All those things happen in a time where people are afraid and it is very difficult to have a conversation about what to do, so they go to the tried and true, let's lock up as many black and brown people as humanly possible. And poor. And so we don't want the apologies 10 years later. We just want people to hold steady to what's happening now. We haven't even really seen the effects. And what people don't know here in New York City, uh, in 2018, over 100,000 people were released without bail, period, without the reform. Before the— Before. 76% of everybody who— who was arrested, was released without bail. And those most of those people had the money to be released. Basically. That's mm-hmm. what it is. And so you have Harvey Weinstein, who uh, abused or raped 100 women in two different counties, post a million dollars bail. But you have Khalif Browder, who was alleged to have stole a backpack he didn't steal, couldn't post $3,000. He was stuck pre-trial. And do you have almost half a better chance, half of your, ch- your chances increase 50% to be found not guilty when you're outside on pretrial than when you're inside pretrial. Ooh. And because is that an indictment of the system itself? Basically, you come in looking like you're guilty because you're coming in from jail as opposed to coming in... In your suit, party. in a clean cut. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. With your mind right. That's right. And there's a slogan, right? They say people who can pay... People with money who pay... Uh, people with money pay bail and people without stay in jail, mm-hmm. right? And so it's as simple as that. And only 11% of the people uh, who uh, are in Rikers will go through ever get any jail time at all. Now, are the wow, people... that's a crazy stat. Because to be on Rikers Island is a real thing, and to think that only 10% of them are convicted and go to jail. That's it. The rest of them, some of them may have reason to be there, but some of them don't need don't. to be there at all. So you, you could be in Rikers for a year, 
right? And then be found not guilty. But you already did Crowder a year. Crowder was there yeah. for three years yeah. and not found guilty. Well, and he, yeah, most people don't. And they're better served in the community with services, right? So we understand that the even in 2019, this bill allows for the judge to have discretion to send people to receive services. So jail is not going to solve mental health issues. It's not going to solve poverty. It's not going to solve um, housing. It's not going to solve any of those things the community is and long-term solutions. Um, so two things. One, uh, are you guys here today because you feel like people are being swayed by public pressure to change this bill? That's a fact. Mm-hmm. They so that's happening. Are. They are getting an immense amount of pressure. I want to shout out the Speaker of the Assembly, Carl Hasty, who's been holding it down uh, against all of these calls, even against the governor who's pushing back, uh, basically saying it's only been a couple days. Though. We, don't, we don't even know what the f- full effect is. We're falling victim to these pushes of fear. And anytime fear is mixed with look at these black and brown people, they're going to destroy the city, things become really easy to do craziness. And we are not going to allow that to happen one more time, especially when we haven't really even seen this thing play out. And all we are saying is let's be equitable with rich and poor. And most of these crimes that they're pushing, look, see what happens, see what happened, they're proving our point. Because if that post person had posted bail, they would be out Not anyway. anyway. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is you should just be poor and in jail pretrial. And remember, this is pretrial. Nobody's been found guilty of anything. Um, So, and then the the next question I have for you is, um, do, other than Carl Hasty, uh, do people understand what you're saying? Do you feel like there's, this knowledge is at the state? I mean, I I think it's willful ignorance at best. So people are more concerned about getting voted back in for their jobs than they are about doing the right thing, which is normal politics. Yeah, for Republicans and Democrats. They are more worried about incumbency protection. What's going to make me get reelected? That's why you have so much gun violence in the city, uh, I mean, in this country, and people are afraid of the NRA. That's why you have the Republicans in the Senate who are scared to show what everybody knows that this president did some crazy stuff. That's why you have Democrats in New York State really trying to peel back bail reform. Everybody's so, concerned about being reelected. So essentially, no one really believes there's a ton of upside to this. Who knows? They just know that it's the kind of thing that's sellable yeah. to people who it's are It's also, scared. again, I think what um, Jamani is saying is, like, people are, are fearful, right? Like, something happened recently. They try to blame it on bail. Um, and as we were talking earlier, that if that person had posted bail, could afford it, they would have been out on bail anyway. Well, that was like the was, it was the lady on the subway who, like, put her hands on a Hasidic Jewish woman yeah. and was screaming like, screaming, like, fuck Jews and all this other shit, right? And yeah. it happened around the time the incident in Jersey City happened. It was, like, yeah. a couple weeks later. And it also happened around the time the guy in Muncie, New York, who yeah. wasn't yeah. out, who wouldn't have been released on bail. Like, that guy in Muncie, New York... Would have never gotten out on bail after st- like that's not even a thing. Right, but that, but like he would have been held without bail. Yeah, but there's a few there's a few things that we got to make sure we unpack. One is I want to make sure we always lift up our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community who are dealing with anti-Semitism, like everybody's dealing with the rise in hate crime. That's a very real thing, right? And we need to address that. And so you don't want to conflate those things, right? Because exactly. it's it's that's what's really bullshit about it is because. I, I get it. It's it's. I mean, as a Jew, I, I'm like, this is crazy. I don't remember this in, during my lifetime it getting worse. It's real. It, and but, people are saying that this is the worst that it has ever been in this country. So now, like, you're going to then use that and take a real thing yeah. and conflate it, and it kind of it kind of devalues what is a real and situation. And anti-Semitism has been on the rise for the past two years. Bail reform has been around for 20 days. So we got to stop pretending like bail reform is the cause of all of that, this. But that, that, isn't that classic? Let's that. be honest. Isn't that kind of classic pitting Jews and blacks against each other? Like, I, I've seen this movie it's unfortunate. before. It's unfortunate, but we're not going to let that happen. We're going to deal with both of those issues. The woman you spoke about, one, the judge, the first time she was arrested, had the ability to give her the mental health services that right, she got. Judge has the judge has discretion. Time. Right. He didn't do it. You can't blame that on bail reform. One, if she had posted bail, she still would have been out. Uh, the the gentleman in Muncie who also has a mental health issue, that's still a bailable crime. And so cash bail is still available. It's just been reduced. And remember, the only thing you want to do is make sure that people return to court. And we see seen statistics that many of these reforms increase everybody coming back to court. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, remember, this is just a pretrial. So we can't let people, um, you know, whenever you're talking about black and brown people, people get 
even more scared and more afraid. And so we're using that narrative as look at the scary black and brown people. Uh, we got to keep them away from your kids and your family. And that's a narrative that we have to continue to peel back because all we are saying is just treat, if you're rich and poor, the exact same thing. So all Look, it's those... so crazy out here. It's so crazy out here. When Jumani walked in the hallway, he was like, yo, I heard you up here with New York uh, Post talking points. <laughs> they trying to pit us against each other. <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah he came and he was like, yo, word on the street is you got the New York, <laughs> New York Post talking points about cash bail. I was like, all I said was they're trying to use crimes well, in the city to make it look like it's a cash well, bail see, problem. What are you talking about? Bike, you know what I mean? Like, well, Ibra brings everything to the mic. You, you should have known that. That's congratulations. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. Ibra I was like, yo, who, who are you talking to? <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to get Yo, they're trying to come. <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. But real quick, yeah. what, are the, what are the, just to lay it out very quickly, what are the crimes that, you, that we believe uh, should not be bailable crimes. Meaning these are things that should not be bailable. Yes, meaning the people should Held not have bond. to post. They should, no, no, they should not be. They should not so have to post bail. Mostly uh, misdemeanors okay. and um, most nonviolent crimes. Most felonies and, and felonies that are violent uh, are still bailable. Uh, as a matter of fact, and this is a chart. Only you can see it. But only fifty-seven percent of crimes that are on record are still bailable. Only forty-three percent of. This is pretrial violent uh, or class A felonies. Ninety percent of those are so, and that's without this law, right? That's right now. That's with the law. That's with, with the law. Right. Yeah. Right. So, and the only thing that sometimes confuses folks is there are some quote unquote violent crimes that are uh, part of this reform, and that's because they're classified as violent, but there was no violence that happened, and there was no weapon. Is there uh, an example? Can you give an example that uh, makes sense? Certain burglaries and robberies. Got it. Uh, where nobody was harmed and no weapons were there. But the rest of uh, violent crimes, particularly violent felonies, are all still bailable. And remember, the, the gauges is the crime high enough that you'll come back to court. That's it. So people are trying to confuse bail with remand, which is you should stay in jail. But the judge will set the bail so high, oftentimes, in these really violent crimes. Like, we'll hear about it. It's on $2 million bail. It Pedro Hernandez, right? Right. Like they don't can't, they are, the judge knows that you can't get out on bail, so they set the thing so high especially on people who do real heinous acts, mm -hmm. right? Because you could still get out on bail for a real heinous act. Right. That's correct. But they set the number so high. I mean, and that's before Harvey this Weinstein, law. Right? right? Like right, right. he was able to post bail and be out. Um, you had a Pedro Hernandez whose bail was $250,000, right? And the mom and the community came together to try to post him out. The, the thing is, is the fact that when you keep somebody locked up and they haven't been convicted of a crime, but there are allegations, you're also keeping them from feeding their family. There are so many um, barriers uh, that come into the place for them to be successful. And so, again, I think it's not just about the bill um, reform. It's not just about elected officials being fearful, but it's also the impact that it has on families um, that uh, that keeps them in this cycle of poverty. But as a, as a society and just us in this room, there are crimes that I hear about where I'm like, yo, you need to sit in jail. But so a few things. One like if I hear somebody if yeah. I hear somebody raped a bunch of women, even Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Right? And and I know you're innocent until proven guilty. Unless, but unless you're my poor. man, you need to go sit down. Unless but, you're poor. But, and then you're guilty. But that's why you need Well and then there's that part too. But I don't necessarily think that that should law, just be the Right. You need a, an objective law. Okay. Right. Because then our personal feelings get involved in be, in making the law for other people. And what we have to remember is what we should also be discussing. Wait, when I'm, if I was a judge, I wouldn't be able to use my personal feelings? You shouldn't. It de yeah, if you if you said you had personal feelings, they probably would not put you on a jury. <laughs> like, it, depending <laughs> how you phrase it. It should be followed to the letter of the law. There yeah. should be a law that makes it so clear that there's no interpretation. It's or, just this exactly. way. Or that your personal Ebro's feelings... feelings should not be interpreted yeah, right. in yeah. the law. If right. you say right. that your feelings could sway you from the facts, you, you'd, be, you'd be axed out. So. Got it. But um, <laughs> what we should also be talking about is speedy trial. Because... Khalif Bada sat in there for three years. He never had a trial. That's right. So if you're found guilty, you 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 might need a timeout. I mean, nobody's going to disagree with that. But what ha what's happening now is people aren't even being found guilty. What this does do is encourage them to plead to things that they're not even guilty of mm -hmm. because they don't want to sit in That's jail right. Right. for three years. Because and you get a, a, a lesser sentence, right? You yeah. get lesser time. And so then now you have this on your record. Yes. Uh, but you're now potentially back at home with your family because that's what the return is, right? So if you plead gu guilty to this, then you could go home. And that's what every young person is being told, every individual is being told. And nobody's telling them the impact on applying to get a loan for college, 
trying to get housing. There's huge impacts that nobody's being told about. In fact, there's impacts just sitting in jail and not being able to go to your family, not being able to go to work. You may have lost your job because you're sitting there for so long. So people are not thinking about the impacts that go on here. All they keep hearing about is these heinous crimes. And none of us, none of us want these people coming back to harm our communities where our mothers and sisters and family live. That's not what we want. So people act like we want people to be harmed, and we don't. We just want a system that actually works. Public safety is no longer just policing and no longer just locking up as many black and brown people. You know, I'm being I'm being sarcastic about my personal opinion. I said that earlier because we often hear about judges, their religious beliefs, yeah. where they're from, yeah. where they went to high school, what fraternity or sorority they were involved in. We hear about all of these personal attributes That's around real. individuals as we're supposed to trust them. Mm -hmm. And I often think the more I hear about those personal attributes, you're trying to make me feel okay with this individual's judgment, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's how we are with, uh, you know, the way our system works, and that's how we are with politics oftentimes, too, where we think we can trust somebody based on these attributes yeah. that mean, are meaningless. Mm -hmm. Or, even in case of people who allegedly commit crimes, the attributes are aligned with these individuals, so people are o okay with them being locked up, not seeing them as somebody's son yeah. or a father right. or a college student or somebody who's trying to, you know, do the right thing in their that's community right. because of their appearance, right? So that's and that's a part of, I guess, the fabric of why we are where we are as a country right now yeah. is because so many of us, our conditioning is conditioned, right? A lot of us are very prejudiced. Mm -hmm. Even right now, we are having a problem where there is bold-faced crimes being committed by wealthy public officials, mm -hmm. right? And people are just picking sides based on attributes that they feel align with them personally. Or oh, values. he's for the Christian right, mm -hmm. or he's part of the GOP, or whatever. So I'm just signing up like it's a like it's a sports competition. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think what you guys are trying to do is honorable because you're trying to make sure that there's a checks and balance system with everything that's going on. And we know often poor people, black and brown people, they get these attributes associated with them, their appearance. They walk into a courtroom. The judge does use their personal judgment, right, yeah. and and ascribes a, 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 a bail or whatever to them that's just unfair based on the crime. Well, if you ever break down Khalif Browder's case, Khalif Browder was allegedly accused of stealing a backpack, right? He was at a party, took a backpack. It was days later that police had taken a young man in the back of their vehicle and saw Khalif and a young, another young man walking, and that's how he was identified, right? Khalif didn't have a backpack on him. There were allegations. And so what we're also asking is for the system, for the DA, for the police department to do better and to do their real job, right? The fact that he was allowed to sit in jail for three years by an eyewitness who then ended up skipping the country, and that's why I believe um, uh, charges were dropped, three years is the fact that we are asking for accountability within a system as well, is what happened to the key witness? What happened to the police officer? Why was he allowed to... to um, be put in prison in Rikers, one of the worst prisons in the country, as a 16-year-old, right? Well, he was young. Let's bring it up to the time. Cy Vance, the Manhattan DA, right? Um, uh, the Was Linda Fairstein the lady you always railing on, Laura? <laughs> um, that we are, you hate that lady. No, I hate, uh, no, no. I, well, I hate her too, but I hate Betsy, Betsy DeVos. Oh, Betsy DeVos. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's a different topic. But Cy Vance, uh, Manhattan DA, Central Park Five. Mm -hmm. Manhattan DA, Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. Manhattan D, same guy over Epstein. Epstein. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same dude. And uh, Jumani, I'm hearing that he won't even go look back at cases that Linda Fairstein uh, was, um, was handling back in the day. To mm -hmm. if Central, if you got Central Park Five wrong, and that should happen, why wouldn't you go look back exactly. at other cases? Yeah, you gotta go. Um, but one, I, I want to make sure I was clear on something you said too, because everybody has prejudices, and everybody comes in with some kind of preconceived notions. If you're a human being, the question is, can you put that to the door for a second, look at the facts, and make a judgment on that? And I think that's a, a reasonable thing to ask people. I didn't want people to think because they got prejudices, something's wrong with them. Because that's just who you are as a human being. Um, but I, I did. With with with, with Cy Vance, um, it's wild. We always said to him is one. You sh I believe you should fire Elizabeth Litter, 
who was on the case with Linda Feinstein. Um, but the one that really pissed me off, which was simple, was that we said anything that Linda Feinstein was over, and it was dealing with rape or sexual assault, and there was no DNA evidence. This is the this is the key. You had no DNA evidence, and there was a guilty plea or a guilty finding. You should look at that to make sure that there's nothing else there. Because you get caught in the cookie jar once, you probably was in the and cookie jar. And that's bare minimum. The fact that you include, you're including the caveat of there was no DNA. Yeah. So we, this, is a bit, this is a low bar very of low. what to right. look at. Yeah. <clears throat> he said no. He's not even looking at it. Like what? That's just unreasonable. <laughs> now, and then well, and have, he punted on Epstein for how long? For, 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 for a very long time. Epstein, Weinstein. I forgot the, the sister from, from Africa. That there was a millionaire white dude who got off many, many years ago. Um, I forgot his name. Do you know his name? Strauss. Yes, the, uh, Strauss Kahn uh, was the first one. Everybody just kind of put that to the side. And then Epstein, and then Weinstein. And now you have this gynecologist who was sexually abusing his patients for a very long time. People are coming out of woodworks now, including... Andrew uh, Yang's wife. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and that doctor pled guilty to two of them. No jail time. And wow. what we found in many of those cases, they either knew someone uh, who was close... Or that person themselves donated money to this man. He dropped mm. the case on the Trumps because somebody called him to office after they had a conversation. He dropped the case. This doesn't make any sense. This is not a man who should be it what arguably is the most critical juncture when it comes to equity, equality, and fairness in the system is the DA. It's, it's time to go because you, you're not able to do your job. You got a lot of explaining to do. Uh, and I don't think you can explain your way out of this. Isn't this an elected position, Manhattan This DA? is. Well, people sometimes forget the DA is an elected position, and we sometimes don't pay as much attention to it uh, as we should. Uh, but it's a remarkable position to do so much uh, good with. Uh, he's up in 2021 regardless. He obviously should not be reelected. But he should probably just bounce now so we can get somebody in there who actually wants to do Oh, the he's going to stretch this out. Probably. He's a lawyer. They know how to stretch <laughs> things out, and that's the and hope and hope that people forget yeah, by twenty twenty one and go back to the black churches. Yeah, and the, and that's the thing is that we need people to show up to vote, right? Like we keep on talking about these elected officials being afraid. We have these DAs that are not in the interest of poor black brown people, but we have the opportunity to get out and vote and make a difference. And when, if we showed up in numbers, then that would look very different for our community. Let's bring up showing up to the black churches, Jamani Williams. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody likes to show up to the black yeah. churches when it's time. That's fact. But That's does fact. has zero problem locking up the young children of these families. Yes, sir. Um, do you feel like black churches are paying attention to the way they're being used politically more so today than in the past? I, I believe some of the black churches have to just take a little bit more accountability in stock. I think it's fine. You need to let people come in and, and talk about what they're going to do. So I'm glad that they do that. But there needs to be follow-up. Okay, they said they were going to do this. It's four years later, three years later, before the next election. What did they actually do? Did they do it or they didn't do it? And I think that's where some of the, uh, some of the balls get dropped. Not in all churches, uh, but in, in too many of them. Uh, they, uh, they allow themselves to be used around election time, uh, and then there's no follow-up. And so Cy Vance could come and talk pretty uh, to all the black churches, but then do all this foolishness. Uh, you know, if you're black or brown or woman or poor in uh, Manhattan, in New York County, you have a right to think you might not get justice if you come before Cy Vance Court, and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, let's switch gears. Eric Adams, the Brooklyn District uh -oh. Attorney. Yeah, Brooklyn I mean, look, you're public advocate. You know, Carmen, you don't have to jump in here, but let's get to my guy here. Uh, Eric Adams, whom we all know on this program, uh, word is he's running for mayor. Yes, sir. Um, he uh, at the podium at uh, Al Sharpton's most recent gathering, this was, I think, up in Harlem, um, said that, uh, the the and I'm paraphrasing here, um, but basically told people to come back where they came from if they don't <laughs> respect New York City oh, right. and... and and, and, and is obviously speaking about the quote-unquote gentrifiers. Yeah. What do you have to say about this? You put me on the spot, man, right now? Yes. On, on live, <laughs> are people going to hear this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I would say uh, it was, a, I think, a, some very bad phrasing for an issue that is very real and people are concerned about. Okay. And so I don't know if I'll say go back to where you came from. Not only, I, everybody's welcome, I believe. What we need to stop is people being pushed out as people are coming in. See, it wasn't um, that hard. And that's that's the way we have to phrase that and have to yeah. have that conversation. Something about, very weird. something about go back to where you come from just <laughs> doesn't sit right. But I what get I, it all I, the time. I, I, I would say this, though, and this go. might be unpopular. 
yeah. right? <laughs> um, I'm going to say this. I do feel like people come to New York City and they, um, they want to change New York City from what it was in good ways, mm-hmm. right? To this new New York City that many of us don't even recognize. That, and in that, some that is valid. And that's not a that's not a an ethnic thing or a, a race thing. That is a cultural New York City local, you know, neighborhood feeling. While it's a huge city, it still has these very neighborhood qualities. Mm-hmm. But that is also a better way to say what I think uh, the borough president was. And trying to, to say. care for people from different walks of life yeah. and are, are very... And while I still believe New York City has some generational segregation that takes place culturally, Jamaicans here, uh, uh, Russians here, Jews here, this, that, and the other thing, um, there is still an acknowledgement that there's a cultural diversity in the city and an upliftment of that cultural diversity that I feel that new people yeah. don't necessarily respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a, that's a valid point. And we see... The, the culture's being stripped from these communities. Um, what I do also don't like to hear is people comparing uh, other migrations. And so people are saying, you know, the city always changes. It used to be Italian, it was Jewish, and it changed to black and brown. And everything that is the same is not always equal. And here's why. Because uh, people came from down south because they were being lynched and they tried to find a better place. Mm-hmm. People moved away because they didn't want to live next to them. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's different than people coming and pushing people out. So the two different conversations, and we should talk about migration, but let's be honest at what happened. You left white flight because you didn't want to live next to a black or brown person. Black and brown person now uh, stayed in those communities through violent years, through economic downturns, made it a place that people want to stay, and now there are people who are coming in to reap those rewards, and they're not coming in just to enjoy it. What's happening is they're coming in at the expense of the people who were there. So now New York City is now the most expensive place to uh, mm-hmm. ever it's ever been. It's the most expensive time now. You have luxury condos and apartments that are vacant, literally just sitting there vacant right. while they're building Empty more buildings. vacant ones. And almost 70,000 people are going to be sleeping in the shelters tonight. A quarter of them are children, and over 4,000 people are homeless on the street. That's what we're living in, and that is a valid conversation to have. Um, it's you know it's also happening in San Francisco. San yes, Francisco is broken. I mean, the Bay Area yes, is broken. Brooklyn. It is a broken you know, area in the nation. Um, it also doesn't help, too, and I need to say this. I heard, and I haven't seen the advertisement, I heard there's a, um, an advertisement running on television where it says, quote, we're moving back to Brooklyn, and it's just like all white families mm-hmm. moving back, and it's a commercial that's running on television. There's also, I don't know if you guys saw the bus shelters where they had the picture of the white dude in his, you know, with his hair slicked back, looking like he was like a Wall Street kind of, you know, fly-type dude sitting on the stoop, and it just said, Harlem. Mm. You see that I, I was living in Harlem, and the the building that I was living in was a predominantly Senegalese community, and now it's white. Like I go visit my friends there, and it's all white folks. They have a new board, or they had a board. They put a board in in place there. You know, they were trying to say that the children were peeing in the elevators. It's just. But it was the dogs that the white folks were bringing into their apartments. It's just crazy. Well, you pissy know? elevators. Let's not lie. So also, we can't lie. Pissy elevators right. in New York City been a thing. But these children were not pissing in the not elevators. Not necessarily right? the children, so let's, let's, but you know, yeah. we also I'm, I'm we also got. I'm not here for the white people dog slander either. Though. Yeah. I mean, as a young person, I shouldn't have. I might have took a leak or two in the hole. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm sorry. I, I'm happened. just I'm saying sorry. it was it was dog piss. <laughs> All that to say, you're you know looking at real estate when I was trying to buy here in New York. Um, I was being told to go to Queens because, you know, people were actually paying upfront cash, right? Um, if you look at um, the buildings in Harlem, they're three million dollars. Well, like, yep. who can afford that? That's well, not how much. I, and we're subsidizing this, by the way. We're right. subsidizing a million dollar properties and condo and, uh, and, and apartments. We're su- there is public funds being used and has been used to help build these properties. under And then under the guise of they're going to have affordable units. <laughs> yes, sir. And some of them, no. Some of the, some of the programs, uh, and this is a failure of the state and the government, some of them, and the governor in particular, call out Andrew Cuomo, some of them, um, 421A, they didn't have to build it on site. So they just built this building over here, and they said they're going to build affordable over there, and it never happened. And by the way... This is a Democratic governor. This is a Democratic mayor. uh, And these things are happening here. Both the mayor and the governor worked for HUD. The governor was the HUD secretary. This is not new. What's happening in NYCHA is not new. We have literally failed. We are rezoning this city out where most people can afford. 
and that and every and that happens in the city council uh, almost every month. People don't hear about the smaller ones that happen, so I hope people uh, pay attention. And the crux of this was a failure of the mayor and the pro and the previous uh, council that passed a law that allowed people to rezone communities that had quote unquote affordable housing, uh, but no real affordability at all. And that's what happened under under. De Blasio. Of, of Democrats. It's a fact. And now, yeah. I was one of like five council members that voted against it and said, this is a problem. We're going to... Bloomberg was terrible. Yeah, he didn't care. He was terrible. And we should... For 12 years. So, you know, he lit the fire whip, and, and we started pouring gasoline on it. Now, we're like, oh my God. But all this you could have seen coming. But I will say, Bloomberg is running ads in California Oof. about his election, and I am hearing... Family members who are like, yo, did, were you living in, in New York when Bloomberg? And I was like, yeah, he sucked. And they're like, oh, well, he sound, you know, like the ads that he's putting out there, people are actually now having conversations about his presidency. Like, yeah. like they would vote they for him. Mike in new clothing. Yeah, you know it's crazy. Now, that guy was a Republican, an independent, and a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, He does whatever. He moves however he got to move to make sure that he's in play with his buddies to keep making billions. I'm not worried about Bloomberg. You should be. I don't think he has a chance. Don't sleep on it. Please don't sleep. I mean, I guess the money, you're right. You never know what money can do. <laughs> Fam, just, from paid. a polling standpoint at this point, it would be so... No. We can say what we want about Biden. Bloomberg is not Biden and Bernie are so far he out there. He could sprinkle. Warren. He could take money out of his lint in his pocket <laughs> I know. and sprinkle it on some communities, and they would go on campaign well, bro, during, on during behalf the, of him. During the football yeah. games two weeks ago, which is a prime time to get commercials, he was running every break. Oh, yes, I'm telling boy. you, he He's got a Super Bowl yeah, He was bro. running every and single he's, commercial. He's skipping the yeah. first few primaries. Like, the man is not stupid, so I won't sleep yeah. on him. He's skipping them because he sees something down the line on Super Tuesday and down the line. He sees something. He's seeing that. Yo, he paid to have a third term in New York. He paid. Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone knew it. Yeah. Everyone was like, yo, it's going to happen. He's paying for it. He's hitting churches off. Yeah, yeah. He's hitting grassroots organizations off. He's hitting unions off. He's donating to this one and that one. He's got shell companies doing X, Y, and Z. Crazy. Like, you know how much we are worth in this room right now to him? You know how much money, bread we could get if that's if that's what we wanted? Like, yeah. he's doling it out. Wong, wong. And it's like, it's probably just him dropping a quarter. Like, he, he's not even... Well, he's listen, here's my, my number one problem beyond anything else is you ain't going to be named Mayor Bloomberg for all those years and now run commercials and say your name's Blumberg. I, I don't understand what's going <laughs> Wait, on Wait, what? what? <laughs> I swear to God, in the commercial, it starts off and he goes... Um, it goes, the following is paid for from, by Bloomberg for president. And then at the end of the commercial, this motherfucker goes, I'm... I'm um, what was the first name again? Mike. Um, that's right. I don't give a fuck about. Him. I'm Mike Blumberg, and I and I'm like <laughs> Blumberg. If you lie about your name for the last twenty years, what won't you do? It don't matter, bro. And I'm Yo, and he's we, flipping on so many things. The uh, fight for fifteen minimum wage, paid sick. He was against all of it. Oh no! Nine now he's now he's a man of the people. He, he oh, saw yeah. the error of his Yo, ways. Yo, I'm never. Yo, if all you gotta watch to know that uh, Bloomberg is full of shit. Mm. Is the dude asked him a simple question about the Central Park Word. Five? Yo, I played y'all. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we watched it. Yeah. The dude was like, "So, do you, you know, have any other opinions, or have you changed your position because you didn't want to reopen that case? Yes, right. and I, you didn't want to pay them yes. their money. Yes, and he was like, "Oh, I don't remember. You got to go remember. and look." He was bugging. He bugged on the dude. <laughs> he got frustrated with a guy asking him questions. A reasonable question about when you were on the job. I'm not fucking with you, bro. No, no. That man apologized for the abuse of style question first this year. He was defending it last year. To the hill. Mm -hmm. Yep. Defending it. Only thing to change on the eve of you running for president all of a sudden. But he got money. A lot of money. And I hope people don't conflate it because, you know, we spend a lot of time with elections thinking about all the things people did from their past, right? And you have to, and those things need explanation or to be apologized for. There is a real difference between talking about decisions you made 40 years ago and decisions you made Last yesterday. Year. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, this just yeah, yeah. happened. We were in this current society yeah. when that happened. But even if, even if you're going to apologize, where's the plan for restorative justice to the community? Even the police officers that lost their job or are still suffering because they tried to bring this to the forefront are really suffering still. Where, where's the plan? And you know, he, and you know he's going to pay somebody. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's going to pay somebody to make us all feel like the work could get done when he's in office. And the danger Because that's ultimately how all this shit happens. And the danger is we have to we sometimes forget that we are not the rest of the country. And so just because we know exactly who he is here, mm -hmm. where we know who Trump was. Yeah. But I'm I'm letting you know 
the ads he's running in California is shifting They're a conversation in working. homes. Yeah. Home. People are like, Bloomberg was a man. like, And uh, he created all these millions of or, or hundreds of jobs. It, it's it's crazy. His BMI, yeah. Black Man Initiative, was a joke. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I was, look, the man, I, I'm not going to act like the man was all bad. There's some very good things he did, actually, particularly around health. Um, uh, when it comes to the supply of gun, uh, guns in the community, not necessarily a demand issue. But there's a lot of things that didn't work that he has to answer for. He hasn't apologized for his housing policies. He hasn't apologized for his educational policies. You know, I don't know, dude, like, it's crazy because, you know, don't sleep. That's all I'm saying. Don't, right, don't, fair don't, enough, I, fair I, the, the headline of this, I, I know the click on this, we're going to get views on this. Yeah. Jamani Williams trashes Mayor Bloomberg <laughs> or, or, or President Hopeful Bloomberg or something love like it, that. Love it. Blumberg. Blumberg. That's right. Blumberg. There you go. Uh, Jamani Williams, Carmen Perez, happy birthday again. Thank you for Thank your time you today. Thank you And if you please, ever believe please. the streets about me again without checking <laughs> that's in, that's why I asked you, though. I ain't say nowhere. That's why I asked you. That's how you do it. You don't come, play with me. You come directly don't to the store. Don't play with me. <laughs>